Overnight, heavily armed federal authorities staging coordinated coast-to-coast raids at properties belonging to music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Sean Combs appears to be part of an investigation into a trafficking operation. And of course, this comes as he faces multiple lawsuits that accuse him of assault and abuse, and he denies it all. Y'all, things just got superheated at the Diddy camp after law enforcement raided his homes and put cuffs on his children. But you know who is shaking up with laughter right now? 50 Cent, because he called this a long time ago. If y'all have been following Diddy's escapades, then, you know, all this mess was triggered after Cassie's lawsuit last year, accusing him of all sorts of terrible things. After about four more lawsuits, the last of which was filed by Diddy's former boss bodyguard Lil Rod, it seems like authorities have finally decided it's time to start building a case against Diddy. While Diddy has reportedly fled the country and left his children hanging, 50 Cent has wasted no time trolling him because it seems like everything 50 said about Diddy is finally coming out. Allegedly, 50 Cent knows exactly why Diddy's homes got raided. And child, you're not going to believe what this is about. It's a messy, messy situation. So let's get right into it. And it's possible Diddy serves a lengthy prison sentence for all this if he were to be convicted in criminal court if this does happen that p diddy is indicted i know in r kelly we saw quite a large sentence for him so it looks like the day of reckoning is finally here for diddy as officials from homeland security investigations have raided diddy's homes in full tactical gear the raids happened at two of diddy's properties on the east coast and the west coast respectively footage from the raids shows that there are almost hundreds of officials on ground with some in choppers patrolling the air and a lot of officers from the local police force were present too some of them even rolled up to diddy's house in boats via water i mean these guys came prepared according to tmz a rep for home Homeland Security Investigations disclosed that Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available. Footage from the raids also shows a couple of people standing outside Diddy's house in handcuffs, and two of those people have been identified as Diddy's sons, Justin and King Combs. But Diddy is nowhere to be found. Allegedly, Diddy had already been tipped off about the raid and he dipped. TMZ reported that they had tracked Puffy's private jet to Antigua, so there were speculations that Diddy might be in the Caribbean nation. However, there isn't any record of Diddy actually being in Antigua or any other Caribbean nation for that matter. It's like he just vanished into thin air and what even confirmed these rumors was that Diddy or someone on his team had pulled his private jet off tracking platforms. The Miami Herald reported that when typing in a search for the tail number of the Gulfstream G550 on flightaware.com, The site says, this aircraft is not available for public tracking per request from the owner-operator. Meanwhile, people are just dragging Diddy for filth online because what do you mean you fled and left your kids at home to get handcuffed by law enforcement with guns drawn? Girl, it's a mess. And 50 Cent is putting his trolling game on because that man has not taken a break since all this started unfolding. He quickly took to Twitter to tweet, now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. Then 50 Cent posted this sick poster for what looks like a Diddy docu-series titled Diddy Do It with the caption, this is gonna break records when this drop. GLG Green Light Gang, you know the vibes. Now, y'all know 50 Cent has been on Diddy's back for a long time because of what we've been hearing about him. Remember when he said Diddy was fruity for saying he wanted to take him shopping? And now it looks like 50 Cent just confirmed the rumors that Jay-Z is up next to be exposed after Diddy because he took to Instagram to post a cryptic missing milk carton image of Jay-Z with the caption. Anybody seen Jay? Puff said the ninja ain't answering his phone. LOL. Well, it turns out 50 has actually been monitoring Diddy's case very closely. And now, word on the street is that he allegedly has insider information on what's going on with Diddy and why Homeland Security is going after Diddy. Now, for those of y'all who don't know, Homeland Security Investigation, or HSI's duty, is to investigate, disrupt, and dismantle terrorists, transnational, and other criminal organizations that threaten or seek to exploit the customs and immigration laws of the United States. But why exactly did HSI raid Diddy? these homes? Well, according to TMZ, the raid is tied to S trafficking allegations, which have been levied against Diddy in recent months from different plaintiffs. Law enforcement insiders are now saying it's almost impossible for Diddy not to face criminal charges because for Homeland Security to raid not just one but two of his properties at the same time. Then you can bet you're behind they already have a mountain of evidence against him. All they're looking for right now is the nail in the coffin that will send Diddy through the entertainment mogul to prisoner for S offenses pipeline, like his good friend 
and R. Kelly. In fact, some sources say, like R. Kelly, Weinstein, and others, law enforcement is actually looking for things like videotapes, audio recordings, and pictures Diddy might have stashed at his house. Because, as y'all know, Diddy likes to record all the shenanigans. Sources say the search was for cell phones, cameras, laptops, and other electronic devices that recorded the alleged blackmail tapes that is mentioned with the names of Stevie J, who is mentioned as a victim of gay blackmail S tape, in addition to Cuba Gooding Jr. and Young Miami, who were mentioned as alleged active participants in Puff Daddy's recent lawsuits. The umbrella there has been shielding the entrance to his home. He has stayed out of sight since Homeland Security agents were here on Monday doing that search warrant, doing that raid, and since headlines after that have gone global about a trafficking investigation. The private guards at Two Star Island spent hours fussing with umbrellas to shield the car. If there were decoys to throw off onlookers there to track Sean Diddy Combs, it worked. For those who have forgotten just how bad the situation was before Diddy's homes got raided, let's do a quick rundown of all the lawsuits in the Diddy Do It or Not saga. So Diddy has actually faced some disturbing allegations in the past, from allegedly offing Tupac and Kim Porter to being involved in racketeering and S-trafficking. However, what really set things in motion was Cassie's lawsuit from November 2023. Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie, filed a lawsuit against Puffy on November 16, 2023, accusing him of out through intense physical, emotional, and blank abuse for over a decade. The lawsuit detailed how Diddy used to force Cassie into freak-off sessions, where he would drug her and the male escorts participating and make them do certain things for his pleasure. She also accused Diddy of putting paws on her, and sometimes it got so serious that she would have bruises and markings all over her body. Diddy also allegedly used to make Cassie carry his firearm and buy prescription medication for him. One time, he allegedly made an attempt on Kid Cootie by blowing up his car because he was talking to Cassie. Girl, it's a lot of horrible stuff, and Cassie even said those 10 years she was in a relationship with Diddy were some of the darkest moments of her life. I mean, the lawsuit had a trigger warning, so you can imagine just how bad things must have been. The day after Cassie's lawsuit dropped, Diddy and his team reached a settlement for an undisclosed amount, which people believed ran into millions. However, Diddy also maintained that the settlement is not an admission of guilt and blah blah blah. But that didn't mean 50 Cent didn't troll him. He announced that he was developing a documentary on Diddy in a post where he lay Diddy's face with R. Kelly's with R. Kelly's Did You Ever Think track playing in the background. 50 then added the caption, Diddy Do It, coming soon, and proposed another title, Surviving P. Diddy, similar to Surviving R. Kelly. Oh, but 50 Cent wasn't done yet. In a now-deleted Instagram post, 50 talked about Diddy's legal troubles, saying, No, he will be fine. He has so much money when his corporate partners pull out. He will just reach in his pockets and make it happen. You saw how fast he paid Cassie. He's a real billionaire. He has F you money, guys. So F you. He made yet another post selling himself as the best man for the job of creating a docu-series on Diddy, because if there's receipts to be found, best believe 50 will do whatever he can to find it. He said, I thought Diddy was a billionaire music mogul. If he's smart, he will file bankruptcy now. Anyone with real money knows why I'm saying this. I'm the best producer for the job, guys. Here comes the receipts. But I guess 50 Cent was just waiting for all this to play out so he could have enough material for his documentary. Because if you thought that was going to be the end of Diddy's legal troubles, then you're in for a shocker. Tell me why, on November 23, 2023, another woman by the name of Joey Dickerson, Neil filed a lawsuit against Diddy, accusing him of drugging and taking advantage of her in 1991, as well as revenge corn. She said the incident left her with severe emotional distress, impacting her mental health, education, and career. Joey is an insider in the entertainment industry, and she and Diddy had worked together on the music video for Straight From The Soul by Finesse and Synquiz. Diddy had been putting the moves on Joy for a while, but she kept posting him because she believed he was misogynistic. Eventually, she gave in and agreed to have one dinner with him. But according to the lawsuit, when Joy went to the restroom while they were having dinner at the Wells restaurant in Harlem, Diddy allegedly spiked her drink. After dinner, Joey and two others went with Diddy to a recording studio and then to his home, where he took advantage of her. Joy was allegedly so intoxicated from her drink getting spiked that she could protect herself against Diddy. She couldn't even stand upright. The lawsuit said Joy got seriously 
injured from the incident, but she chose not to report it or seek medical attention, probably because of the shame or stigma she might have been feeling. But the worst part is that, according to the lawsuit, Diddy secretly recorded everything. Joey said a mutual friend, Devante Swing, later told her that Diddy showed him the footage, and when she asked him who else had seen the footage, Devante responded, everybody. In the midst of all this, Diddy had to step down from his role as chairman of Revolt. Of course, 50 resumed trolling Diddy, even offering to buy Revolt from him. He made a post saying, I'll buy that from you, Playboy, for the low because you know Cadillac and AT&T gonna pull out. I'll give you a few dollars for it now. Sell it to me, then we can be friends. I'm serious, call my phone. But the lawsuits just kept coming. A day after Joey Dickerson Neal, another woman named Liza Gardner filed the next lawsuit against Diddy, accusing him and musician Aaron Hall of taking advantage of her and her friend in 1990. Liza and her friend had allegedly been at a music industry event where Diddy and Aaron Hall were also present when they got invited to Aaron's apartment. Upon arriving at the apartment, Diddy and Aaron then allegedly took advantage of Liza and her friend before sending them out. But it didn't stop there. According to the lawsuit, Diddy allegedly visited Liza at her apartment a few days after the incident, and he put hands on her to the extent that she had to seek medical attention for her injuries. And just so you know, Liza was allegedly only 16 years old when this happened. Diddy's defense at the time, as released by a spokesperson, was that the claims involving alleged misconduct against Mr. Combs from over 30 years ago and filed at the last minute are all completely denied and rejected by him. On December 6th, Diddy was slammed with another lawsuit by a woman identified as Jane Doe. This lawsuit accused Diddy of S trafficking and gang blank when she was 17 and he was 34, which allegedly happened in 2003. According to the lawsuit, the perpetuators were Diddy, Harve Pierre, former president of Bad Boy Records, and a third unnamed individual. Jane Doe's attorney later released a statement that said, as alleged in the complaint, defendants preyed on a vulnerable high school teenager as part of an S trafficking scheme that involved plying her with drugs and alcohol and transporting her by private jet to New York City, where she was blanked by the three individual defendants at Mr. Combs's studio. The same day this lawsuit dropped, Diddy released a statement saying, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, family, and for the truth. Well, that response obviously didn't do anything to stop the avalanche that was coming Diddy's way because on February 27, 2024, he got hit with another lawsuit from Lil Rod, his former producer. Lil Rod worked with Diddy on his latest project, the love album Off the Grid. Allegedly, Lil Rod experienced many highly disturbing things when he was working with Diddy between September 2022 and November 2023, during which he also lived with Diddy. Lil Rod's lawsuit implicated many celebrities and industry figures, including Christina Coram, Diddy's chief of staff, Sir Lucian George, Universal Music Group CEO, and Ethiopia Habtamariam, former Motown Records CEO. According to the lawsuit, these guys were involved in many illegal and racketeering activities that Lil Rod claimed he had evidence for. It's interesting because the Neighborhood Talk reported that that Ethiopia Habtin Mariam is allegedly scheduled to testify against Diddy in exchange for her name being dropped from the lawsuit. But that's not even the most disturbing part. Allegedly, Diddy tried to force Lil Rod into freak-offs by promising him a successful career and the Producer of the Year award at the next Grammys. He said there were times when he would sleep off at Diddy's house and wake up beside escorts with no recollection of what happened the previous night because his drink had been spiked the previous night. Lil Rod also accused Diddy of using his sons Justin and Christian to perpetuate his criminal activities. For example, Diddy would allegedly ask Justin to procure the services of escorts for Diddy's infamous parties, and many of the girls were high school students. The lawsuit also accused Diddy of shooting his son's friend at Chalice Recording Studio, and honestly, all sorts of nefarious things. But what's even more disturbing is that Lil Rod claimed to have receipts, lots of proof, from video footage to photos and audio recordings that can back up his claims. So it seems like this latest lawsuit was the final straw that broke the camel's back because because from what we can see, there is now a full-on investigation into Diddy's alleged crimes. Now, y'all have to remember that the lawsuits brought by Cassie and others are civil lawsuits, so there can't be any state prosecution or jail term involved. However, it's only so many lawsuits one person can be slammed with before the government says, okay, what's going on here? And that's what we're seeing play out in real time. But it goes even deeper because sources say before the search warrant was granted, three women and a man spoke with federal officials in New York City about allegations 
allegations of trafficking, assault, and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms. However, Diddy's attorney, Aaron Dyer, told NBC News that Diddy had been cooperating with law enforcement until the raid and that the execution of the search warrants was a gross overuse of military level force. The attorney also said in a statement, this unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Also, isn't it interesting that in the midst of all this, Lil Rod has updated his lawsuit with a little tiny detail he forgot to add earlier? Young Miami is allegedly paid to be on Diddy's roster, and she has allegedly been dealing him pink coke. Then, Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Corum, has allegedly deleted her Instagram account. Anyway, fans are going wild on the internet with different opinions and conspiracies about what's going on with Diddy. One person said, All of this seems to be a great fabulous show that we all know doesn't stop at Diddy. Who falls next? He is not the Epstein of the industry. He's just a pawn. And this one just said, Don't pick up the soap, Diddy. But y'all, let me know what you think about Diddy's home getting raided by law enforcement. Do you think he's going down for real this time? Or will this just be swept under the rug? Comment down below and we'll see you in the next video.